Welcome to Brian CPA review of ASPE on leases for CFI and CORE. Today we are going to review ASPE 3065 leases. Businesses lease assets and it's important for students to know how to properly treat leases in terms of lessee or lesser perspective. What is lease? Lease is a contract by one party, which is lesser, conveys land, property, services, and etc. to another leasee for a specified time in return for a periodic payment. For types of leases, there are two types. Capital lease creates asset or liability in the balance sheet. Leased asset is subject to amortization and lease liability is recorded at present value minimum lease payment. Operating lease doesn't result in asset or liability in the balance sheet. Rather, it is recognized as rental expense. We must assess three criteria in order to determine if the lease is capital lease or operating lease. First, the leasee will obtain ownership of the lease property at the end or bargain purchase option. If the leasee is able to renew the lease property at the end of lease term, lower than fair value or bargain purchase option can be initiated, this criteria is met. Second, duration of the lease term is a major portion, which is 75% or more. The lease term for leasee is more than 75% of the entire period for economic life of asset, this is met. Third, the lesser is recovering investment in the lease property. When the present value of the minimum lease payment is equal to substantially all or 90% or more of fair value of lease property. If the monthly lease payment for the entire base period is more than PVMLP, this is met. For operating lease, if none of the three criteria are met, it is considered an operating lease. Operating lease recognizes lease rental expense in the income statement. Now let's dive into lessor's perspective. There are two types of leases if the lease happens to be a capital lease. Sale type lease, aka STL, is if the fair value of the lease property is not the same as its carrying amount to the lesser. Another type is direct financing lease, aka DFL. This is if the fair value of lease property is the same as its carrying amount to the lesser. Recognition for lesser. In order to be either sale type lease or direct financing lease, the three criteria must be met. First, any of the three conditions are met for capital lease for leasee criteria. Second, credit risk associated with the lease is normal. And third, amount of unlikely reimbursement cost can be reasonably estimated. Recognition for lesser, when lease criteria is not met for STL or DFL, we recognize rental revenue as income in the income statement. Let's look at a scenario for understanding leases. Michael owns a soccer stadium in London. Michael has recently put up a lease advertisement out for a lease. On July 1st, 2023, Michael and the buyer signed a five-year lease agreement to use the soccer stadium for $100,000 monthly. The buyer does not get to keep the stadium at the end of the lease term. The soccer stadium's economic life is six years remaining. The soccer stadium's fair value is $7 million. Let's consider the three criteria for the leasee. Duration of the lease term is a major portion, 75% or more. 
Stadium's economic life is six years and the buyer signed five-year lease. This is 83%, which is more than 75%. This criteria is met. Another criteria is the lesser is recovering investment in the lease property. When the present value of the minimum lease payment is equal to substantially all, 90% or more, of fair value of lease property. The soccer stadium's fair value is $7 million. Five-year lease with $100,000 monthly lease payments is $6 million in total. $6 million divided by $7 million is 85%. Because this is less than 90%, this criteria is not met. Therefore, one of three criteria is met. The type of lease here is a capital lease. For measurement of lease, lease asset is recognized on the balance sheet at the present value minimum lease payment. Discount rate is the lower of lessee's incremental borrowing rate and interest rate implicit. For example, Go Surfboard Inc. leases surfboards to surfers in the South California area. Charlotte signed a five-year lease agreement with Go Surfboard for a surfboard lease payment for $30 per month. Surfboards have economic life of 10 years. Go Surfboard paid $2,500 to get the surfboard. The surfboards have a fair value of $3,000. Charlotte can renew the lease at $20 per month for another five years at the end of the lease. Discount rate is 3%. The leasee will obtain ownership of the lease property at the end or bargain purchase option. There is a renewal lease option at the end of the lease term, lower than $30 per month fair value, which is $20. Because it can be renewed lower than fair value of the initial lease, this is met. Now, we consider if duration of the lease payment is a major portion which is 75% or more. The lease agreement is for 5 years. The economic life of surfboard is 10 years. The duration is only 50% because 5 divided by 10 is 50%. Because 50% is lower than 75%, this criteria is not met. For third criteria, we consider if the present value of minimum lease payments is equal to substantially all, 90% or more, of fair value of lease property. $30 per month for 5 years at 3% discount rate is calculated to be 1649 The fair value of surfboard is 3000 Present value of minimum lease payment of 1649 of 3000 is 55%. 55% is lower than 90%. This criteria is not met. Now let's consider Lesser's perspective which is Go Surfboard Inc. The three Lesser criteria must be met in order to classify a lease a sale type lease or direct financing lease. First, any of the three capital lease criteria for lessee is met. There is a renewal option at the end of the lease. First, leasee criteria was met. Therefore, this criteria is met. Credit risk associated with the lease is normal. Credit risk is assessed to be reasonable and normal as $30 compared to other similar receivables that Go Surfboard Inc. has. Therefore, this criteria is met. Last criteria is the amounts of unlikely reimbursement costs can be reasonably estimated. Unlikely costs can be reasonably estimated as monthly lease payment is fixed with a fixed period. 
this is met. Because all three criteria are met for the lesser, the capital lease can be either be sale type lease or direct financing lease. Because fair value of lease asset is not the same as current value, it is classified as a sale type lease. Goal surfboard is to recognize sale of lease initially at present value of minimum lease payment at the discount rate. Over time, the initial recording of lease is reduced by the cash received. We can also separately consider sale lease back transactions. It is when purchaser buying the property simultaneously leasing the property back to the seller. Any profit or loss from the sale is deferred and amortized. It's capital lease and direct financing lease. However, any profit or loss from sale is deferred and amortized in proportion to rental payments over lease term. This is operating lease. In summary, for leasee, one of three criteria must be met to be a capital lease. For lesser, all three criteria should be met to be classified sale type lease or direct financing lease. We categorize leases to be an operating lease if none of the leasee criteria are met. That's it for the review of leases under ASPE 3065. I hope this lesson was helpful for your studies and gave you a direction on tackling leases. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.